Hi there, welcome to the office chat of June 2017. What has happened in the last two months, May and June? Well, let's start with Europe, the place where I live. Um, and then if we look at recent incidents, it's mainly uh, happening in the UK. A number of uh, attacks that uh, drew a lot of attention. Uh, one was on the London Bridge where three guys uh, drove a car into a crowd, went out of the car, started stabbing uh, a number of people before they were, uh, the police arrived and they managed to uh, kill the perpetrators. Eight people died, um, an, an incident that got a lot of attention and looked a bit similar to um, an incident before where one person with a car uh, near Westminster uh, Bridge attacked a number of individuals. And it raises the question whether we see copycat behavior in the modus operandi. A lot of attacks using vehicles, trucks, cars, uh, and in some cases followed by stabbing, uh, a stabbing incident. Westminster, London Bridge, two cases. Um, so this copycat behavior is an interesting part also in research in terrorism and counterterrorism. And the same holds for the effect these attacks by jihadists on general population have on polarization within society. And the question is to what extent that leads to violence, counter-violence in a way, uh, by those that want to seek revenge. And we saw a case of that in the United Kingdom where a person also using a van drove his car into a crowd in front of a mosque. A number of worshippers were injured, 10 were injured, and one person unfortunately died. Uh, the person was arrested. It's not entirely clear whether he has a right-wing extremist background, but it's of course one of the worries among uh, the authorities whether violence leads to, from one side leads to violence by another side. And it's also interesting because uh, actually yesterday evening in Paris, there was also a, a ca an attack that looked uh, like that. A car um, drove into the fences that were protecting a mosque. So, but it's not clear yet. We have to see whether that was uh, a, an attack that we can compare with the one in the United Kingdom. Also in the United Kingdom in Manchester, a suicide attack by one person. Um, a lot of kids died, 23 horrible uh, incident that um, led to a lot of reactions. Uh, one of them was by the British Prime Minister, Theresa May, who um, um, raised the threat level in the United Kingdom from severe to critical, um, because they uh, were, were afraid there might be uh, similar attacks, because they had no idea of exactly what group was behind it. Uh, and this raising of the threat level was the first time in uh, I think more than 10 years, or about 10 years, actually, yeah, the first time since 2007. Another uh, reaction was by the Muslim Council of Britain, and I quote here, uh, they said that this is horrific, this is criminal. May the perpetrators face the full weight of justice both in this life and the next. So a lot of reactions, uh, also not only by the, the number of uh, casualties, but also the fact that many children died uh, at that con uh, concert. Now let's move to other parts of the world. In this course we mentioned uh, several times that most attacks place, take place outside the West, that most victims are Muslim, uh, and that we see most attacks in North Africa and the wider Middle East. Um, if we look at the wider uh, Islamic world, we see recently um, a phenomenon that is very worrisome, and that's in the south, southern part of the Philippines, where a group affiliated, associated with the so-called Islamic State, attacked a, a town, Marawi, uh, killed a lot of uh, citizens, attacked um, the military, and in uh, the past weeks uh, there have been uh, a fight. Uh, the, the government has not has uh, doesn't have it under control yet. Uh, several soldiers died, actually tens of soldiers died, um, a lot of civilians dead, a lot of insurgents dead, and um, um, it seems another uh, area where IS is showing its face uh, uh, and, and is, has managed to attack others. Then let's move to a place where IS is uh, still attacking others but is losing ground uh, rapidly, and that's Syria and Iraq. Mosul, uh, a campaign to 
Liberate Mosul started already in October last year, more than half a year ago. Uh, the situation today is that they own, the IS only has the old city center under control, uh, but is losing ground rapidly and it's, it's a matter of days, um, perhaps weeks, before the entire town of Mosul uh, is liberated. The very unfortunate thing is that still tens of thousands of citizens, uh, civilians are trapped there and um, there are a lot of uh, signs that, uh, that there are a lot of casualties among them. Of course, IS not only losing ground but also a lot of its fighters. The same holds for Raqqa, most important town they occupy in Syria, actually their, their self-proclaimed capital. It's now totally surrounded by uh, forces led by the Kurds, supported by the United States. And also there it remains uh, a question uh, how much time it takes before they liberate the town and also in that situation uh, a lot of civilians trapped. Also in er other areas they lose ground so we'll have to see. Um, next time when we return with this office chat it will be after the summer break so end of August and my prediction is that both towns will then be liberated but we we'll also probably get reports about numbers of people killed. Also very interestingly, um, how many foreign fighters will be arrested, how many will be killed. So um, interesting developments to come. Unfortunately, I'm pretty sure that by August IS will not be, uh, will not be defeated militarily um, in the whole area of Syria and Iraq and definitely not as a social movement, as a brand, as an organization that will inspire others to commit attacks in many other parts of the world. So let's uh, uh, wait and see what will happen in Syria and Iraq. I hope for the best, but I'm, I'm afraid that we will come up with high numbers of casualties, unfortunately. Um, well, sorry to end with this uh, rather negative news, uh, but we'll see you back in August. Thank you. <laughs>